Well, the cuteness factor on the show just got turned up. Yeah, Alex is here. <laughs> no, that's not the case at all. <laughs> Back here is Alex Melrose is here, along with dog trainer <laughs> Kelly McFarlane and some very special guests, these beautiful little kittens. We're going to talk about new puppies and kittens and what sort of checkups and vaccinations they need. Welcome, guys. Thank you Thanks. for finally bringing cute little animals yeah. with you, Alex. I've been demanding this for quite some time. These guys, tell me about these guys. How did you end up with them? Well, they got dumped. There's four of them. Uh, I just brought in two today because I thought it'd be a bit easier to control. And I also wanted you to take them and <laughs> make them part of your family. Well, you know what? I've already sent the photo to my husband, so we're looking pretty good that we might Yay! be uh, adopting these because yeah. these guys are up for adoption, aren't they? Yeah. So um, this is my plan. So this is Marcus and this yeah. is Bella that we're holding yep, Marcus here. Marcus and Bella. Yep. Okay. So Kelly, talk us through the sort of vaccinations that new puppies and kittens need. Uh, so for little kittens, um, especially cat flu, is um, quite quite a major one. Um, and also there is the feline leukaemia virus, which um, I'm sure Alex will be able to go into more detail about. Yeah, and and also actually feline AIDS as well is quite is quite common in New Zealand cats. Yeah. So we we often vaccinate against that, especially if they're going to have quite an outdoor lifestyle. Why is that common in New Zealand cats? Uh, we've got a lot of cats. Yeah. We've got the most cats per head of population of any country. Okay. And um, when they're... When <laughs> no they're, thanks to Gareth Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they congregate into a, a small area, there's a lot of territorial disputes, a lot of fighting, and, and cat AIDS is predominantly spread through bites. <laughs> Okay, so, so we filmed a vet care recently and on yeah. screen we can see um, a 10 week old pup, it's a poodle, a spoodle puppy isn't it? Spoodle, yeah. Uh, so what's going on here? He's just getting a check up, so we were just sort of showing what we do um, when we check everything over. We sort of work from nose to tail and um, Pepper was actually getting, particularly getting the ears checked out because there was a little bit of an ear infection going on. So what sort of things are you looking for when you're doing the checks? Uh, oh Marcus, well, you, okay. you try to look at everything. You look for infections in the skin, the ears, you're looking at the teeth. Um, especially in a, in a young puppy like that, you're checking they don't have um, broken teeth or retained teeth, uh, retained baby teeth. Um, listening to the breathing, listening to the heart, uh, checking out the tummy, oh, looking for any birth abnormalities at that age. Things that aren't quite as they meant to be. So what, yeah. what's happening on here? Uh, well, this is an adult cat and you can see how my awesome vet, Sue, is working from nose to tail there. So she's just started checking the teeth. Now she's checking the eyes. And she's, she's looking for abnormalities in the, in the retina, in the back of the eye. Yeah. So what sort of handling, Kelly, do these like new puppies and kittens require? Um, so for any new animal, as you can see, this one really does not like being handled. <laughs> 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 not at all. Yeah. Um, but the main thing really is, um, especially with, with cats and, and dogs, get them used to your handling their feet. Um, because if you think about it, um, some cats can get quite sharp claws. Sometimes they need clipping. Um, same for puppies. Um, checking their ears, it just makes life easy for the vet um, whenever they're going to go on vet visits. Um, and also as well, just kind of getting used to them around the mouth and certainly around the tail because um, if you think about them having their temperature taken for the animals, you've got to lift up the tail. You don't put it under their tongue That's when it's right. a cat. Now, do you? Um, so, um, very, very basic handling. Okay, so Alex, what about these little guys? I mean, they were separated from their mum at a very young age, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It, it probably helps that there was four of them together so they could look after each other a little bit. And then, of course, my awesome, awesome team of nurses, they've basically raised them, you know, with from a bottle, taking shifts at night and had them at their house. And so these guys have been handled tons and tons and tons, you know, to get them ready for you oh, and your family. <laughs> I was going to say, what's next for these guys? But I actually think I know what's next for these yeah. two. Well, maybe everyone can follow their progress at your house on Facebook, <laughs> on the show's Facebook. How are they with dogs? I've got a little dog. Good. Very good. Because yeah. they, they hang out in our clinic all, every day. Yeah. And so we've got tons of dogs around. OK. Here, so. This little guy, Marcus, is quite the adventurer, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he really is. Oh, well, this He really is likes you. Oh, he's lovely. Thank you so much for bringing them in. It's all right. And uh, my husband's <laughs> going to really thank you for this one, too. Yeah. Uh, beautiful kittens. And we have a $50 pet of the week voucher available. Congratulations to Finn. That's my child's name. Aww. The poodle from Wanaka. Oh, look at that. That's a great picture. <laughs> it was having Aww. great fun here at Tidy Beach. You are our winner this week. Jump onto Facebook and post your favourite pet pick to be in to win. Pet of the Week is proudly brought to you by Pet.Kiwi, a one-of-a-kind pet store that provides free vaccines to shelter animals.